Hi there, and welcome to the Color Cinema. I am Aaron, and uh, I'm just straightening some stuff away here before I start the video. Uh, see how professional and prepared I am when I'm making these videos? Oh my God, it's like a master class in, well, in, not in preparation, that's for sure. So this video here is pretty much uh, because of a good friend of mine, George, uh, who lives over in the UK, who... Got me some really, really cool stuff that I want to show off today. And I also got another thing in the mail as well. Hey there, Punk. Hey there, William. Welcome, man. <clears throat> I have my... Uh, hey there, Sean. I got my peppermint mocha coffee. And I am <clears throat> ready to go. So I have an 80 Films release to show you guys. A nice, cool, hard box one. It's part of the Italian collection. I have uh, one of the latest... Hey, George. Welcome, man. So here's George. Without George, I would not be doing this video today. Hey there, Andy. It's been a long time, man. It's been a while since you've been on my channel. Just saying that. Just putting it out there. Hey there, Ice. Welcome. So I want to thank you, George, because the video here, here necessitated, well, this this here necessitated the video. Rest in peace, Bob Saga. That's true. That is a shock, actually. That's Out of all the ones we've had, this is actually a shock. All right. So we're going to start off right away. We're going to get right into it. And it's an 80 films release, and oh my god, are their releases getting really amazing with the way they do their packaging stuff. So, little story first off. Uh, <clears throat> hey there, Dustin. Uh, so, this actually, the house next to me is abandoned. It's what, like, literally pretty much was was a wreck of a house. So, somebody bought it, and they're re, 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 redoing the house. Uh, so, the name, so the postman bought the, uh, my, my package to the house to the abandoned house so i go outside and at this time i'm wearing just like flip-flops right and i look at the front door because it says package has arrived then i go to my side door where the, the normally put packages says package has arrived nothing there so i'm freaking out because i'm like, again this is an area you know maybe something got stolen so i go i put on my boots go outside it's really slippery so i slide but don't fall down to the end of the road. And I said, you know what? I'm going to walk just up a little ways. So I go up and I look and I see in the snow on like, not in a, in a mailbox or anything in a pretty much in the steps on top of the steps in the snow, the package. Tarkovsky. Well, Stalker, maybe. So luckily, I was able to, to find it there and get it uh, because I was actually really, really excited about this. You guys will see why in a second, actually. So starting off the 80 films release because I really love the way this is done. And this is The Nun and the Devil. So this is a hard box release. This came out around maybe a couple years after, uh, a couple years, right? A couple years after, after The Devils. Ken Russell's The Devils. Oh, Alan, man, that sucks. I know what it's like. So this is a hard box release. Armored guy. That's a cool release, man. So we got here uh, in this one. So you'll see on the inside, but I'll tell you the features. We got an interview with actor Luke Miranda. You got commentary by Kim Newman and Barry Forshaw. So you know it's going to be good commentary. We got uh, Judging Luke. Okay, I already said that. The Devil of Martine interview with actress Martine Brochard. Uh, Palalo Connection, a featurette about director and writer Dominico Paolella. I probably pronounced that wrong. Horny Devils, Non Exploitation Explained, interview with film historian Marcus Stiglager. An alternate English and Italian title sequences, England, English trailer, Italian trailer, reversible sleeve. <clears throat> and, what's up? It's, and it does pass the, the knock test. So we see right away the Nun the Devil has a beautiful looking booklet. And I got to make sure uh, before I can show you stuff, I got to make sure it's uh, NSFY. It's, it, it is SFY, actually. Hey there, Dungeon Walk, man. You know, stolen packages. So it's been a while since I've seen this one. I'm trying to remember Nun the Devil. I know I've seen it years ago because if it's non splitation, I'll tell you right now, I am a non splitation person. And uh, 
But that's not all, because inside, right here. Oh, nice. I haven't got my Black Friday replacement yet. We have alternate artwork. So this is the disc right, right here. i got to move this a bit. So this is the disc right here. And take it the disc, and I'll show you the alternate artwork. Because this, this is, of course, the Italian collection. So on the other side, it does have the Italian collection original art right there. By the way, next week I'm probably I'll be starting up my uh, my weekly. Uh, this is 88 films. My weekly Patreon live movie club again. So. The Nun, the Devil. You have the other work right here. Artwork. I actually love this artwork, the, the original. So this is uh, see, 80 Films puts a lot of work into their releases, and oh my God, is this actually a cool looking release? Directed by the guy that did the Prey, the story of a clustered nun, uh, clustered nun. Is a heavily erotic tale of seduction and persecution detailing the sinful practices which spell out a 16th century convent. They do. Like, I, I need more 88 films in my collection. Uh, maybe there'll be one of the ones that I'll start collecting more this year. So I did want to work into, uh, into different companies this year. And next up, and this, guys, this is a beast of a set. The May West... In Hollywood, 1932 to 1943. Ten films. Ten films here on this set. I have <clears throat> number 3,366 of 6,000, <clears throat> which is kind of cool because it's sort of visible into itself. Feature-wise, on this set, all my crap. Look at that. See this? These are the special features. So kind of like sync that in for a second. So we'll go over. We can see the artwork unadulterated, but without any... I know it looks like you're seeing her boobs there, but it's actually just a shadow. But I think because it's Mae West, they, did that, they kind of did that on purpose. So you see the... Right here, the Mae West one. And... Oh, the features are insanely great. So you get 10 movies, plus you get a TV movie with Angelian playing Mae West. And I'm so in the to seeing that. It's, I used to be in love with Angelian. Rest in peace. I'm, I'm sure, pretty sure she has passed away, right? Angelian. She passed away in, in the 80s, right? Angelian. Didn't she die like a breast cancer or something like that? Or am I thinking someone else? So first off, we got Night After Night with George Raft. I love George Raft. So... Uh, And this one, there's two on this one. So you also got, of course, She Done Him Wrong, which, you know, is a classic. She's still alive. This is a second video in a row. I've almost killed somebody that's not dead. <clears throat> Special feature. Watch the TV movie for sure. That's probably going to be one of my first watches because I, when I watch, as I watch these films. So we got the high definition remaster of Night After Night. A, a new 2017 restoration of She Done Him Wrong from a 4K scan. Original mono soundtracks. Auto commentary on She Done Him Wrong with Friddick, with Friddick, with critic and film historian Pamela Hutchinson. May West at UCLA, a 29 minute archival audio recording with, with, uh, with May West. We got uh, an eight minute short, ca cartoon short, called, kind, of an, uh, kind of a parody thing called She Done Him Right, an animated short film parody. With uh, Pooch the Pup and other canine ca characters. I also get The Merry Old Soul, a eight minute Oswald the Rabbit short, which has a lot of like Hollywood like celebrities in there. Yeah, William, I almost killed her, hey? <laughs> uh, and uh, including like Mae West, and I think uh, it might have good old W.C. Fields in here as well. 
71. Holy crap. Who am I thinking about the past on at a young <laughs> age? Like she's like she was like a sexy actress like that. So we got I'm No Angel. She teams up again with Cary Grant right here. And we also have Belle of the 90s. And this one she works with Roger Pryor. I was going to say Richard Pryor. I was going to say. And a Western star. So if anybody knows Johnny Mac Brown, uh, then, yes, that is a Walter Lance cartoon, actually. <laughs> and I love myself some some of the stuff, the Woody Woodpecker stuff. I got two Woody Woodpecker sets, actually. Not Marilyn Monroe. No, somebody that, that, that she died in the 80s. Um, okay, so they got the 2019 4K restoration, 2021 restoration of Bella the 90s from a 4K scan. Wow, brand new scan for that one. Uh, original mono soundtracks, auto commentary on I'm No Angel with critic and writer Farron Smith Nami. Uh, two S Super 8 versions of I'm No Angel, a pair of original cut down home cinema presentations, um, original theatrical trailer, image galleries, publicity, and promotional material, new and improved subtitles for a deaf hard of hearing. Who was in Mr. Mom? Was it Angelina, Mr. Mom? The whole uh, Mandela effect, guys. Mae West going to town. I love the Dublin Tondras in her uh, <laughs> in the titles. And Klondike Annie, which is not so much a Dublin Tondra. So, who's in going to town with her? 2018 restoration going to town from a 4K scan. Uh, 2014 high definition re re remaster of Clonda Canny original mono soundtracks, auto commentary and Clonda Canny with academic and curator Eloise Ross, Eloise Ross, downtown girl, 20, 34 minute appreciation of Mayo's unique persona with academic and film historian Lucy Bolton, tactical trailers, image galleries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Terry Gar was, was a mom. The Mr. Mom, too. Yeah, it was Angelina. I was trying to think of though. Oh, uh, Indy, you got to get yourself into some Mae West. She was like so far ahead of her time. We got uh, another one with a uh, with a Western actor in it. So, go go west, young young man. And it has a warm William, and of course the great Randolph Scott. Lyle Telp is in this one with Mae West as well. We also get on here. Every day is a holiday. My favorite Sidney Poitier film. Uh, I don't really don't know. I love In the Heat of the Night. We got here 2021 restoration of Go West Young Man and Every Day's Holiday from 4K scans, original mono soundtracks, auto commentary on Go West Young Man with writer, film historian Nora Fiore. The Only Way is West, 19 Minutes, Exploration of May West Cultural Importance with critic and author Christina Newland. Original thoughts go trailers for Every Day's a Holiday, image galleries, publicity stills, the whole works in that one. I would have to check. Blackboard Jungle is an excellent film. My little chickadee. I love this one. And there is no... Uh, second film in this one. So you get two artworks for My Little Chickadee. The great W.C. Fields, who I truly adore. Uh, and this one, we got a 2018 4K restoration, original mono soundtrack. May West, a 1982 95-minute uh, TV film on a biopic on May West, starring Angelina as May West and co-starring James Brolin, Piper Laurie, and Roddy McDowell. What a great cast. We also get a love-hate relationship. Appreciation of My Little Chickadee with Dr. Harriet F Fields, granddaughter of W.C. Fields. Hollywood Bowl, a Walter Lance animation featuring many Hollywood char characters, including W.C. Fields. Original theatrical trailer, image galleries, new and improved subtitles. So a lot of incredible stuff on there. Hey there, Sima Dave. Happy New Year to you, man. And got me some amazing Mae West here. And... Last but definitely not least, but this one has Lloyd Bridges in it, and it is The Heat's On. 
So, that's the last one. Where's that Tropicana? Is Tropicana film on its own or is that no? It's another. Heat's on right here. They're definitely some of her best, some of her best and greatest films. To be honest with you, this is a great. If you never, if you're not familiar with uh, May West, this is a really, really good start. Really, Piper Laurie. I don't want to kill anybody else. So I'm going to say Piper Laurie is alive. Is Piper Laurie alive? I think she is, right? I love Piper Laurie actually. We got a Super 8 version on here on this one. Uh, image gallery, new and improved subtitles. Still alive? I didn't kill Pepper Laurie, so there we go. Yeah, look, it's fantastic, Sam Dave. I know that you'd uh, that you'd enjoy this one. So here we have a 120 page book on May West. She was definitely like a trailblazer when it came to uh, came to cinema. She was kind of a, the Madonna of her time for a film. <laughs> like she was going to do what she wanted to do. Uh, they'd give her a script. She'd often like change the lines and improvise the script. It would be much raunchier <laughs> when she was done with it. Uh, but, uh, and you know, and some of the people were shocked that Mae West was a more of a lady. And in all honesty, screw those people. So we got like write-ups on all the films here. We got Sex Hollywood and the Making of May West by Iris Vizzi. Vise C. Uh, we have Eleanor Kellogg on here. Thank you. It's disconnected. I, I always forget to say that. Um, doing May West Sunbeam Trips from Prison. Uh, May West Ten Rules of Love by Madeline Metzen. Has May West Reformed by Lou, Lou Garvey. A art. And by the way, these articles I'm talking about, like... The first one was in 2021, but the other ones that were done were in 1927, 1935, 1936, and there's one here, May West on Hollywood in 1959. So think about that for a second. These here, Some of these films here, some of these articles in here talking about May West were done back in the 20s and 30s. That's incredible because you really get like what they thought of May West back then and this this is so cool there's only a f around three box sets now i think that i have to get to be cut up on indicator box sets until they come out with more with new box sets but this is gorgeous and this is what it looks like oh, here we go there on this side i like these new these i wasn't sure how i was going to feel about these paper cases when they first started doing them with the norman j warren set and stuff like that but I kind of fall in love with them. I actually really like them. It is really cool, isn't it, that they do that, to reprint the contemporary articles, the articles of the time, right? So thank you again, George. These are two incredible releases from 80 Films and Indicator. I am so excited to have both of these. Hey, the future boy. So see this here? Remember when everybody said Criterion was a film school in a box? This, my friends, is really that. This is indicators releases are a film school in a box. A Warlock, this was a gift, a, uh, a Christmas gift from my uh, good friend George, who's on here. Uh, and he just like hit me up one day and he said, you know, um, I want to send you something. And he offered me the May West set. He wanted to know if I... On the May West, I'm like, oh my God, yes. Not only that, but when I told my better half, uh, she let it kind of a little squeal because she's a huge May West fan. So this isn't just one for me. My better half loves May West as well. She's a an um, an incredible May West fan. I will definitely be checking out the new screen. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to see it here in Canada because I think, hey there, Antoine, because I think our theater's closed here. Uh, so I got one other thing. I got an omnibus today, and it's coming out tomorrow. So I'm so you're going to see it today early. But before I show it to you, so you guys all know what an omnibus is, what, what they look like. So I want to show you the packaging that Amazon sent my, can you get that? Sent my omnibus in with no like packing thing or anything, no paper, nothing here. 
Look at this. So this is the box. This is the box that they sent it in. This is the book. So I want you to like think about that for a second. They literally took that book, this book right here, and decided we're going to send it in a box that's four times the size of it with no padding or packaging stuff at all, just floating around on the inside. So this, of course, is the X-Men Omnibus. This is the first 31 issues of, uh, of X-Men, the original X-Men. So you got the entire, like, Stanley jerk, jerker, Jack Kirby run. And you also have the, uh, the start of the Roy Thomas Werner Hoth run as well. So really good looking book, except like, there's a little bit of damage right down. Just on, on the slip. I don't really care about that, so I'm okay with that. There's the all the covers. I guess thinking the fuck right off. Uh, how the hell are you still doing that? Uh, and the really nice thing is that with the new ones... They're actually doing this here. The X-Men Omnibus with the classic X-Men logo. And with the X symbol on the back. There's definitely not any snow in my area because not enough snow would have snow. <laughs> and it all are, opens up like this. All the letter pages are in here as well. Runs, I think, 760, 780 pages, something like that. Uh and it's just filled with, with great stuff. Well, which uh, I'm going to do a review of this one down the road. So we'll uh, leave that for uh, a bit later. Yes. So for those that like disconnected, definitely my wingman today. One of, because, oh, by the way, whoever picked, bought the Franco shirt, let me know because I'm, uh, I'm super uh, stoked that my Franco shirt sold. And so... If that if that's you and you're in here, definitely let me know. Hey, there so. Congratulations. Hmm. So we're gonna look at and the indicator and 88 films website. Hey there, Rankin. Welcome. Morgan. Morgan. You're gonna love this. So I got from George, none of the devil. And May West in Hollywood. I am right now in Nova Scotia. I'm originally from Newfoundland, but I guess I travel a lot. I used to travel. I used to travel a lot. Did you just hear that? With it, that. Uh, America has advised not traveling to Canada. <laughs> oh, yes, so I wish. I got it. The new mic always sounds better than no mic. I'm, I need to recheck the video. So I'll let you know. Because I am subscribed and have checked a couple things. But usually it's when I'm on the run. Especially recently. Do I play hockey? Not well. Uh, I wasn't that great of a skater. They used to put me... In the uh, in the net, uh, and and like shoot pucks at me. I think they didn't like me. Uh, so no, actually, I was a I was uh I was good at soccer. That was what that was my thing. I was good at soccer when I was younger, and uh, I was good at gymnastics. I was, yeah. I think gymnastics was probably the one thing. So, yeah, gymnastics. Uh, that was my thing. I wasn't like a team, really like a team team person, um, because I was a bit a bit of an you don't see it on here so much. I was a bit of a goofball. Roger knows what I'm talking about. Uh, so I would try to be like that team guy that, that gets on the team. And oh, ball hockey. That I'm better. That 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 everybody played that. Like I mean, we're basically you go up to that to the road where 
you know, where the road ends. And you, know, you get the net or two nets if you if you could. If not, then you just put some rocks on the side of the road, uh, you know, on each side. And you'd have your stick. And, you know, you tape it up a bit. And then, you know, the ball, you know, the, the red ball, the, or the red, white, and blue ball sometimes. Car. <laughs> so, so many times I almost get hit by cars. But for me, it was like I used to love doing those. I, I love gymnastics, and I love, like, doing stuff outside. So I was always doing stupid things, like climbing up on buildings and so, seeing if I could somersault uh, and do dumb shit like that. <laughs> and, and to, yeah. Yeah. And that's why I have back pains now. And that's why my knees hurt more now. All right. You guys want to look at the website? You guys want to check out Indicator? You want to check out 88 Films? You want to see some of the great stuff that is that is there, that is available? I had to make sure I got it up here, all right? But yeah, I am, like, I put on uh, on, on Twitter, I said, like, you know, describe me in one word, basically. And I got a couple of responses. Luckily, nothing horrible. Like, <laughs> that was good. Um, overall, people were pretty nice about it. You always, like, risk it. Like, if you're on social media and you're like, hey, like, describe me. The one thing I will never do on social media is like, cause I still have Facebook and I only have it because like my mom and like some of my relatives cause don't like the, the platform actually. My birthday. Yes. My birthday is March the 31st. Your birthday is actually closer than mine. Your, your birthday is next month. Oh, pardon? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the mom's birthday was the seventh, by the way, I had my mom's birthday. That's a hint. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, my dad's birthday is early March, isn't it? Huh? My dad's early March. Sure. Yeah, I'm not good with net numbers. Indicator and Rika are, are com extremely underrated labels. So let's dive right in. Look at 88 Films first but look, and look at Indicator here as well. So what's my favorite birthday cake? <sighs> I was never much of a chocolate person, unless it was maybe like an Oreo type of cake. I loved ice cream cakes when I was younger. Uh, I still like them now, actually. I love ice cream cakes. Uh, I used to love the McCain cakes. I'll be bluntly honest with you. <laughs> they're cheap, but I like them. Um, you know, they don't cost that much, but they're, you know, they're they're deep and delicious. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know if I got a favorite. Uh, I'd have to think about that. So before we're going to indicator, let's go over to uh, Lumen Media, the home of Powerhouse Indicator. Be being for you are a smart man, Indy. You are a smart man. So here's Indy. Did you know about these? So guys, thank you, George. Um, so guys, my birthday's coming up. <laughs> Just letting you all know right now. Hey, the river. Uh, so these are two like uh, kind of. I think Spanish like horror films from like the thirties. I think we're thirties or forties. Yeah. So the thirties. Uh, so we got La Lona here. Uh, La Llorona, sorry. And uh, actually my good friend, Jose, Master Chaos himself. Exactly. Uh, he's, um, has a La Llorona film coming out with the great Danny Trejo. It will soon be on. Streaming platforms. I think it drops to uh, for streaming for renting on on January twelfth. So make sure you check that out. Oh, this is cool. I love the look of this early horror classic from Mexico. Uh, expressionistic, lyrical, and atmospheric. Ramon Pion's film draws on the influence of Universal Pictures' contemporary or contemporaneous horror cycle and incorporates. Elements of period melodrama and romance. The landmark production and evolution of Mexican cinema has been newly restored. Thank God he tells me that tells me so much about the film. But we have a uh, behind the scenes here, a documentary on it, video appreciation of the film, limitation booklet, uh, four thousand copies. It's pronounced Yorona.
Are you uh I can see if you're if you're like good pronunciation, you know I'm not. So there you go. But thank you. Uh so we got uh the fan of the monastery here. Uh made in the wake of Yorona <laughs> success and directed with the flair by Fernando de Fuentes, regarded as one of the masters of early Mexican cinema. Fantasma del Convento uh, tells a macabre tale of a troop of hikers who will become lost in a forest and take refuge in a haunted monastery. There they encounter shape-shifting and shadows, ominous sealed doorways, and a cellar crowded with coffins. So that that actually sounds good. Good. U.S. Canada releases and U.K. releases now too. Yeah, are these? Which are these? Are these like going to be here as well? Definitely give me a shout. Video appreciation by Abraham Castillo Flores, a head programmer of Mexico's Mor Morbido Fest, and uh, limited edition booklet as well on this one here, four thousand copies. Uh, the UK, so okay, so two thousand for the UK, two thousand for the rest of the world. I'm not quite sure. I got to check. The, I, are these on Amazon already? Both regions so far, perfect. So Time for Dying is here. Mad Dog Morgan. So uh, if you uh, picked up the last movie, that, which was, by the way, something that George gave me a while back uh, with uh, Dennis Hopper, you're probably going to be digging Mad Dog Morgan. This is a pretty insane film. It is by Philippe Moray. Um, uh, so Philippe Mora is the director of films like The uh, Beast Within, and probably more infamously, Howling 2, Your Sister's a Werewolf, and Howling 3. Uh, oh my God, is this so much different from any of those films. So very much different than every single one of uh, of those films. So we get two presentations of Mad Dog Morgan. I've only got the DVD of this one, so I, I probably will be upgrading this one here. Uh, it is, uh, it's a good film. Like Dennis Hopper like literally was pretty much in, insane when he made this movie. And he, and he, Dennis Hopper would have said so himself. Um, no, no, no. He is passed away because he died after uh, 24. Dennis Hopper. Uh, we got uh, two other commentaries on there with the director. We have To Shoot a Mad Dog, Behind the Scenes Documentary, Hopping Mad, More Reflects on the Making of Mad Dog Morgan. That's our Mad Dog, a conversation with Dennis Hopper, a retrospective interview with the legendary actor. Not quite Hollywood interviews. Over an hour of outtakes from Mark Hartley's acclaimed documentary. Man, not quite Hollywood. That that exploitation documentary. That is the documentary that keeps on giving. How many releases have we seen from Umbrella? And like any time, like any time, there's an Australian like release, especially an Australian exploitation release. Like you, you go look through it. You will see. <laughs> like, and by the way. It's, there's even more not quite Hollywood interviews about that. 2010, was it? Did it? Was it that? Yeah, Sad. He was such a great actor, too. He went way too young. Got an 80 page book book on the, with the new essay by Terry Judo, Philip Mora's pre production notes on Mad Dog Morgan. That actually we, should be pretty cool. And again, here it is 2,000 copies for the UK and 2,000 for across the world. There'll be a blonde by. It's pretty insane. So Mad Dog Morgan, George. Is he was pretty much a legend over in uh, in Australia. He's a real person. Madeline Morgan was actually a real person. It's Dan Morgan. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Based on the true story, Dan Morgan, infamous Australian outlaw, once described as the most bloodthirsty ruffian that ever took to the bush. And uh, in actuality, Dennis Hopper, when he was making this film, he uh, he lived up to the title of Madeline Morgan, actually. I love Cemetery Terror. It's really, really good. I, I, you know, rest in pieces. The river I haven't seen in years, and I do own it. Forgotten Jolly Volume Four, Jocko. I think is going to be the best of the bunch so far. I know some people are kind of iffy on it, but uh, but I really, really like uh, Forgotten Jolly, Jolly Volume Four, and I think that people, well, uh, a lot of people, Jocko, I think, are going to eat their words once they actually get it. Especially, 
Because here's the thing. If you don't like Sister of Ursula, the Jallo Sister of Ursula, do you really watch Jallo? <laughs> Mad Dog Morgan much better than Ned Kelly. Huh. I actually I would I like Ned Kelly, but I do agree with you. I love this look too. The look of this of this cover right here, like the drawing, like the pencil drawing on here, the artwork is, is fantastic. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. I made a new word, guys. It's fantastic. Yeah, I would put it Jocko as one of the best. This will be the sleaziest. I'll tell you that much right now, right? Jocko. This will be by far the sleaziest. If you like sleazy jellos, this will be the sleaziest box set that that uh of the all the jello boxes that they put out. Like just let that, let that sink in for a minute. All right, so we got some of the great stuff here. They have so much great stuff. Uh that we got Battle Be here, uh Voices with David Hammings is here, uh The Devil's Men, an unsuitable job for a woman. A dandy and aspic. We got the uh, Joan Croft Berserk. We got Border. We got Gardens of Stone. Let's see all these. Actually, let's go to the box sets because that's where I want to. I want to go right now. All right, but all the Black Angel. See, it's going to have a lot of sleazy stuff. <laughs> uh, all right, so this is. We'll go down here, from here, and we'll see some. A lot of these are to print, but so that's the original Sinbad box set. I have that. Uh, the Ray Harry has the ones which I also have. Uh, Hammer Volume 1, Fear and Warning. I got that one. It's a great one, by the way. Hammer Volume 2, Criminal Intent. It's even better. Uh, Five Tall Tales, Ran Bud Boddicker and Randolph Scott at Columbia. That is amazing. Samuel Fuller Box at Columbia is also amazing. Uh, Hammer Volume 3, uh, William Castle at Columbia, Volume 1. If this ever goes back in print again, guys, get it. It's Not only does it have the best of the William Castle films on here, it's got a great documentary as well. Got William Castle Volume 2. This is still available, by the way, guys. At Columbia, uh, the of course Norman J. Warren one is actually kind of sold out. Marlene Dietrich and Joseph von Sternberg at Paramount again from 1930 1935. Incredible. <laughs> uh, the only one I think that's going out of my collection from Vinegar Syndrome, well, there's two. Can you guys guess without me saying, can you guys guess the two Vinegar Syndrome movies? I'm probably going to be selling later on this year. <laughs> can, can you guess? I bet you can even guess that. Two vinegar What? Guess what I'm <laughs> exactly. Most of the films that are sold out in boxes come as standard editions. That's a really good point there, Iceman. Uh, so don't feel like you missed out. You can still buy the standard editions of uh, of a lot of these films. I'm not sure on the Marlene Dietrich stuff or on the or the May West, but you definitely can when it comes to uh, some of this other stuff. Actually, I'm keeping Girl Scroll Screamers. Raj says I when I I say it wrong because he says that I have to scream it when I say it. Girl I like to do it in the in the trailer. So volume five, which I recently got. John Four was given me by, by my good friend Vanessa. You're right. Apollo Syndrome is one of them. <laughs> Tell Jen. I'm selling the hell out of that film because oh my god. Yeah. Even a cat Ellinger commentary, I can't do it. And Cardona is another one. You guys got it right. It may be a nice looking fridge magnet, but I'm never going to rewatch them. <laughs> and I really got to think of it like that. Like I'm, I'm eventually moving to Morocco. I hope. Oh my God. I hope. Um, Cause if I got to spend another year here doing my day job, I, you, you may not see me on camera because I will, I don't know, dig a hole outside and kind of bury myself in it. I tried. No, um, you're going on the that I didn't know about Ebola before, <laughs> and I hadn't seen that before, but I had seen little bits. Uh, but yeah, I tried to watch Ebola and didn't get through it. I couldn't get through it. Now I tried to watch it again the other night, actually, with the audio commentary on, and it still got to me. It still bothered me. So, aside from like. Being, you know, a, a bit stupid. <laughs> I uh, And also, you know, there's real animal deaths in this film as well. I, I'm not down with that. 
and it's just it's an edge lordy type of film for me right it's like it's a film like oh look this movie's edgy no it's not okay so uh Fu Manchu uh I got that set uh Columbia Noir volume one and two I have volume three and four I don't have I need volume three and four and I need the last uh Hammer volume Hammer volume six and I, thanks to my good friend Georgia I got Mae West in Hollywood so I'm just only three three sets away from actually completing my collection here uh, until they come with another box set, that is. Indicator for me, like I gave Indicator my top score this year when I did like my uh, my Calties. I gave my top score. Dude, I haven't had a lot. I haven't had hair left. Us. Well, one, I never get stressed. <laughs> Except when I'm working. No, that's not true. I get stressed on my work. I hate it. No, no, people are that I work with are really nice people. You know, nothing wrong with the company at all. It's just that uh, I'm going to say this. I'm going to be be bluntly honest here. For some reason, when uh, somebody goes to call the company over the phone, not everybody, but some people, when they pick up that phone, they're like, you know, how big of an asshole can I be? Like, how, how crappy of a person can I be to the other person on the line? Well, pretty crappy. Yeah, exactly, Warlock. You understand what I mean, man. But here's the thing. I say this at the end of every video. And it started because I was having a rough day. Hey, there's Sierra. Welcome, man. Thanks. Thanks a lot. My latest omnibus actually is the X-Men one. I just got the one in today. Came in a massive pack box with no uh, no packing at all, which makes me nervous about the ones I got coming in February and March. And hopefully... See, all you have to do is realize this. When you go to call... A company or you go to your local store or whatever and you're going to that person i uh, like the if you're if you're if you've ever said these words like without a serious reason i'd like to talk to a manager nine chances out of ten you're not fun at parties e yeah people probably don't like being around you <laughs> that's in all seriousness if you're one of those people like you know you can watch them on social media all the time <laughs> nowadays. But yeah, I deal with those people. And uh, so I get a lot of, you know, cursing, I hope you die type of thing. Um, one of the the girls that worked under me was told twice in a day that, uh, that you know, that was pretty much that exact thing. You know, hope you die from well, a specific thing. And uh, then when the get to the point where it gets really bad then the uh you know then they get me and i am not going to listen <laughs> to you anymore i'm going to listen to you for a bit and then i'm going to be you know were you mean were you mean to people okay anyway that's that that's my rant for today which movie workplace is most similar to your job Maybe office space. Uh, yeah, you ever, you ever see office space? <laughs> so yeah, the, you know the guy from office space. That's how I feel. But clerks, probably clerks too. Um, not clerks too, but clerks. Uh, as in, there's Dante, and there's Randall. And uh, sadly, I'm not Dante. <laughs> so, there you go. There you go with that. Uh, all right, so 80 Films uh, got some great stuff as, out here as well. Let's check out some of their stuff. Taxi Driver. Love that movie, actually. Such a good movie. Oh, love. Disconnected. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I know it's Disconnected. I uh, talked about this uh, This Paramount. I think it was Paramount. Like 4K set. Uh, and one of the films that was in that 4K set was Taxi Driver. There's also Stripes in there, too. So you got, like, really good stuff. Oh, man. Sierra, I feel sorry for you, man. I know how hard it can be working retail, especially in holidays. I worked at Best Buy back when the Xbox came out. 
So up in Ottawa, man, was it hectic. Like people were like, you could barely move. <laughs> Just what would you say you do here? <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to need you to move your desk. Just to... <laughs> a Columbia classic set. I had a boss like that, actually, not the job I'm had now, but I did have a boss like that. That was very much that, like, uh, kind of passive, passive, aggressive, like, dickhead of a boss type thing. I think it's volume two, right, Iceman? Uh, I'm not sure if Disconnect is still here, but if he is, hey, dude, <laughs> I'm just shouting out your channel. Um, uh, by the way, uh, for the next four days, you're going to see me over on Master Chaos's channel. So please check that out. Uh, me, Master Chaos, and Mr. Tony the Dead are do are reviewing Scream 1, 2, 3, and 4, all four of them. Uh, There's going to see one per day coming on to a Master Chaos TV channel. Uh, and we, I think he dropped part one, a Scream part one. I will say that I do, I dominate a bit of the conversation, but I, I talk a lot. <laughs> so I apologize for that. It is like, I mean, I'm, I'll never want to go back to retail again. I'm like, after this, I'm sub, like, <laughs> I'm not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, sub, I'm supposed to be in Morocco right now, guys. I'm supposed to be in the sun. I'm supposed to be like sitting at a cafe, <laughs> like eating like croissants <laughs> and like teaching film class. Not at the same time, though. That does sound like a pretty awesome thing to do. I would be the coolest teacher. I would be the coolest. Every teacher's got to think to, to do that. You do, Dustin. You really do. Scream four. Can I call Mill Creek? Let's sit. I'll show my theme song. I know because uh, one, I, I talk to Mill Creek. Like you know, well, don't talk to them, but uh, you know, I get my emails from them, and I have the, all the Ultramans here, so I can listen to all the Ultraman theme songs. I am so jealous of you, Sean. I would love to work at a library. Um, friend of the channel here, too. Um, Kubrick, actually. Kubrick Lover works at a library, too, as well. One of my dreams was always to kind of work at, like, either a movie store or a library. Because you better stream Moroccan cafes. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Screen box. Oh, that would be amazing. Can you imagine if 80 Films did a screen box set? We need a good one. And you know what would be really cool, Ice? Guys, one of the movies that's still, that still cut to this very day is Scream. So unless you got the Blu-ray from Hong Kong, sorry, Blu-ray, the, the Laserdisc from Hong Kong, if you got the latest edition of Scream, do you know what? You don't have... It's still not uncut. So when you open up that new box set of Scream that came out a couple years back, that's still not uncut. An idea of how many Ultraman sets we have coming up this year. Oh, God. Heath would know. Um, Heath is certainly at midnight, guys, for those that uh, are new to my channel. And uh, definitely a good friend of the channels. Um, I know there is, I think Zero is coming next month. In, in February. Yeah, Zero's coming in February. And uh, I know there's another one. So Zero is part of the more of the contemporary Ultraman series. So we're looking at like we're up to, to like 2017, 2018 with Ultraman right now. Um, and then we're at about 1998 or so when it comes to the Legacy series. No, they're not rebooting Scream. Like the, they're, uh, they're just, you know, they're using the Scream title because Here's the thing. They said, we don't want to use Scream 5. That's too long of a number. We'll just call it Scream 2022. That's a longer number. <laughs> I bartended before. And and I bounced too <laughs> at my mom's bar. bar. And um, where's that at again? Rock here? No. no. St. Paul's, right? You're at mom's bar? Or you're, just, you're in Ontario then? Or? I don't go to bars. <laughs> no. no. But it was my mom's bar. <laughs> There's this one guy that uh, would come in, like he'd play the you know those 
those machines, the Terry machines, right? I have heard that as well. I have heard a rumor. Now, remember, this is just a rumor that they might be releasing Psycho Cop in and maybe getting Psycho Cop 2, maybe dusting it off and doing a 4K uh, double feature. Five cream. <laughs> we have to call it five cream. Five cream. See, five cream CR could be like the porn equivalent of a scream film. But yeah, the guy would come in. He would get a. Uh, he would cash his check uh, at the at the at the till there, and then would get like a straw, like a plastic straw. You like kind of bend it up like this, and he would take the take the put a bunch of money into the machine. He'd set his, you know, the, you know, how many like lines you want. And then he would take the straw and press it against the thing and just let it go and keep going and just going and going and going. And then you just go have like with what he had left over, you would go have a drink or two. And sometimes he might win like a hundred or 200, but he like definitely lost a lot more than he won. Bar stories. <laughs> There. Say, uh, you never know what you're going to get here, guys. I was a jack of all trades. <laughs> um, but no, it's kind of like uh, Scream Five is not a remake or a sequel. It's uh, it, it's what well, it, rem- it is a sequel. It's not a remake. It literally, it's just a sequel. It's a sequel to the other Scream. That's not great, man. It's Scream Scream against a sequel. <laughs> no, Scream Scream again is a one-off film, sci-fi horror film. Um, but uh, that's a oh, Roadhouse, man. Gotta be Roadhouse. You got Patrick Swayze. You, you know, you got the you got Terry Funk from wrestling in it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, but no, Scream Scream, the new Scream movies, it's just a sequel uh to the you know to the last Scream film. I'm not quite sure if they're gonna mention much about it. Hopefully we get Kirby back because you know, Kirby rocks. So kind of looking forward to that. I really, really want to see the Scream film. Roadhouse is awesome. I don't know anybody that doesn't like it. You like Roadhouse? See, how can do you like Roadhouse too? This is Roadhouse too, by the way, guys. Jonathan Shea, who was in Eight Millimeter Two, sorry, Eight Millimeter Two, because that movie needs a sequel. Uh, and uh, then there was another one too. They was in. Oh yeah, Prom Night, the remake of that. But yeah, there was supposed to be a while back. Like there was, it was rumored. It never happened. Uh, a, a another Roadhouse film. I was supposed to have like I don't remember who the guy was. I know the girl was like Ronda Rousey. They're going to have Ronda Rousey and this guy, and like there there were going to be two road mag. <laughs> that was a fridge magnet. See, yeah, that's too cool to be a fridge magnet. I would love the Psycho Cop stuff. You see, Roadhouse. It's just it's a classic. It's a classic film, and it's true. I mean, if you see. I can see why you didn't go to bars because that shit happens in bars. There, there's fights. Like, did you go to when you were in, in Steamville? No. You didn't? No. Not even 104? No. Or, uh. One time we went to a bar, you were there, and you brought me. Oh, which one? Now I think we might, might have had a drink again. That's it. Which bar was that? It was Drink Day Out. I remember going to. Where was that? Oh. What's the one down, down really down? Uh, it's still there, I think. The really sleazy one. Where? Steamville. There's like the fr- the bar that you will go to uh, for the uh, for Manhattan's and stuff like that. Usually, like on Tuesday nights, and then uh, they had like a lot of white Russian specials. And then on Friday, Saturday nights, you could go to like one of four main, which was like. You go have your shots and go have your drinks and dance and stuff like that. Mania Cup. <laughs> Mania Cup. And then the third one was like this bar just all the way down. And you had, you know, like, you were drinking beer. It didn't matter what you asked for. You were getting beer there. And uh, if you weren't careful, a disease of some sort. So you had to be very careful. Uh, that's where those older ladies probably are my age right now, actually. But at the time got me like line dancing. Oh, fuck, I hated that. Anyway, guys, sorry about that. <laughs> Movies I look forward to watching Scream, Orphan. 
Yeah, that's right. They're doing Orphan sequel, aren't they? And Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You think Orphan's going to be good, George, with the now that we come, kind of the twist is out there? Because you know, the twist is out. That's the thing. The twist is out. You've never watched any Scream movies. I literally, I gave the first Scream movie a five star rating. We were watching uh, one, of, I think it was a cinema style thing on Scream. I turned it off because I realized Raj has not seen Scream yet. And although he's not much of a horror guy, you would like that. <clears throat> Robert Zadar and Wings Hauser. And Robert Zadar was in Samurai Cop. So, you know. Not only was he in Maniac Cop, but he was in Samurai Cop as well. Cheers. Northern Lights, are you from... Uh, <laughs> you're from New Flanders, right? <laughs> no, it's not Cheers. Cheers in uh, Corner Brook. Um, it's killing me, man. Yeah, I, I hope they don't, too. Here's the thing. I think that they could very much see our kill off Dewey in this one. I don't think they should. And I'll tell you why. Here's why. Uh, because David Arquette pretty pretty much like solidly loves the, the Scream franchise. He does. He truly does. <clears throat> you have to like plead every time to get Nev Campbell and Courtney Cox back. Hollywood Cup would be a good release, actually. You have to plead to get to get Nev Campbell to come back for like 10 minutes in the movie or like screen three, yeah, kind of like that. Um, or, or you know, and, you know, Courtney Cox will come back more, but Nev Campbell still. I'm thinking, you know, you're going to kill someone off. That's going to seem like sacrilege. I know. Kill off Courtney. Kill off Nev Campbell. Kill Sydney Prescott. Because unless you're Friday the 13th and you kind of do it like haphazardly, you don't normally kill off the Scream Queen. But I think it would work here because Dave Darquette, he's not he's, he's not going to definitely cost a lot to work. He's, he's not going to be like hitting them up for a whole ton of money. He will come back because he loves the franchise. He is the Donald Pleasant of Scream. Hot take number two. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch The Orphan too. I'm looking forward to The Orphan. I'm looking forward. I wasn't looking forward to Texas Chainsaw Massacre at first, but I am now because of the people behind it. So that actually got me very inter interested in it. And the trailer actually isn't bad. Do you know what was really cool? They showed the trailer to Bel Air today. So it's a dramatic version of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And people say, well, what, why do a dramatic version of Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Because I don't think you can do any more comedy-wise with the series. Like, it's a good show. <laughs> like it kind of peaked the comedy dramedy like aspect that it did. So if you're going to do it, yeah, you might want to kind of do like a more dramatic version of it uh, because it's a story that's easy to do in a serious vein. Like it's, it's easy to change it up. The, yes, I did hear for the game. Kane Hodder is doing the motion capturing for that. Now, Courtney Cox has been in like two, three screen movies since they broke up. So I think she's okay. I think they're okay, actually. <laughs> they still work together. Maybe it was more fresh, but that was years ago, man. So I'll die in the first. Now, they can't come on the first five minutes. There's got to be a bit of a connection there. But... Scream 2, my favorite was still, has Jerry O'Connell and Tim T. Oliphant. So, I love that. <laughs> All right. We're going to look at the 80 films. I'm, I am so easily distracted today. You guys can say something, and, I say, and I'm like, oh, look, that's shiny. And, and I'm distracted. So, None the Devil is, I think, the, the most recent release from the Italian collection. That is nice. So there's a professional, violent, violent professionals. 
not just the professionals, but with the development professionals. Hatch it for the honeymoon. This is a gorgeous looking set, too. Uh, here's one to pick up, guys. He had a lead in part four. Um, but the, they messed it up. Got like stuff on here, like tough ones. Gorgeous looking set here, too. Jerry Collins is cool. And Sliders is one of the great sci fi shows. I love Sliders, especially early Sliders. The Aliens had Sliders, though. What's the most horror movie? What's the horror film looking mo most forward to watching this year? Scream, actually. Uh, I thought it was going to be Halloween Ends. And I'm still very interested in Halloween Ends. Like, Kills was okay. It is. Child's Play. There you go. Uh, so Scream is definitely the one I'm looking more, most I'm most looking forward to uh, watching this year. Like there's a, there's other ones that I want to say, but uh, Child's Play is definitely like Child's Play, but uh, Scream is definitely the the biggest one. Halloween ends. Let's see how it goes. And uh, although they killed off my one of my favorite characters, Halloween ends. So uh, and Halloween kills. So that was kind of bummed me out a bit at the end of the film. Be careful, or something's there. Steam vampires. Okay, let's see which one is. It's not Patty's Pub, Clancy's Bar. I mean, I was I was in Redwood a few times. Is this all of them? Uh, this one. Right, those ones that came up. One of these is probably it renamed. Well, we said we used to have nicknames for it, but I can't say those on camera. Four <laughs> K spin your grave just how is it trash? Because that looked like a really good box. For those that don't know what trash is talking about, uh, Ronan Flicks got a four K edition of a spin your what the heck is this? And how did I not know this exists? Modern vampires. One combines dirty violence, seedy sex, and malicious wit with quite the panache of writer director Matthew Bright. Anyway, so there's a, uh, a box set. There it is right here. A spit in your grave box set that came out. Now, the classic film, three to set, has a 4K UHD of I Spit in Your Grave. The great Camille Keaton. You get the you get the documentary growing up with a spit in your grave. High on my list of wants is uh, this one right here. Also, I got to say this right now for those that it, that here's one too that I wouldn't mind picking up. Uh, Ryan has releasing. No, Death Game. So, Death Game is an excellent film. So, for those that saw, oh God, what's it called again? Keanu Reeves. He didn't call it Death Game. Uh, the one where he's like the musician and his wife and kid leaves. It's literally, it's just a remake of a Death Game, actually. What's it called, guys? It's an Eli Roth film. It's a remake of Death Game. Uh, I should know this. Knock Knock. It's called Knock Knock. Okay. Uh, so, Knock Knock, the Keanu Reeves film. So, the better <laughs> version of this with the beautiful uh, Colleen Camp, by the way, is uh, Death Game. There is, it's a two disc limited edition. There are, well, there's the I uh, Spin Your Grave, the original. Then there's the sequel done years upon years later. Uh, you can probably like miss out on that one. Then there's the remake of I Spin Your Grave, which had its own sequel. And then it's had a third one. So there's five altogether. So Grindr is releasing, uh, you know, rest in peace, Sage, who helped start this company, uh, Sage Shalom. But uh, Grind Death Game, really cool. They got these here, Death Game Meat Cleavers. And it's basically, I don't want to give too much away, but there's a guy, he's at home, his wife's gone, and two very beautiful girls knock on his door. And... Most of the time, you think, "Wow, there's that's how a porn movie starts." But sometimes, sometimes, guys, sometimes temptation has a price, 
And in Death Game, and in Knock Knock, thanks to uh, you will find out what that price is. And it's not the same in both films. But you gots to check it out. It's a really cool film. I don't want this. Oh, God. Just had to make sure him to sleep sometime. Find a way to get this here. That's a meat cleaver. Like, that is a meat cleaver uh, keychain. That's cool. <clears throat> so, this is a really cool film. Couch, couch, you would like this. Yeah, Sandra Locke and Colin Camp. George Manning, a family man whose perfect life is turned into a nightmare of sex and torture when he allows himself to be seduced by two new balls young strangers who show up at his door on a rainy night. Lost, considered lost for many decades, Death Games presented for the first time on home video in its original 239 aspect ratio, meticulously restored in 4K from the OCN. It has... The new restoration, provocative in-depth interviews with cult movie legend Colleen Camp and director Peter Trainer, conducted by Eli Roth. Of course, is a huge fan of this. Uh, we got here additional interviews with, with Sandra Locke, Larry Spiegel, cinematographer, editor David Worth, and screenwriter Michael Ro Ronald Ross. We have an audio commentary from Colleen Camp and Eli Roth and Larry Spiegel and David Worth, a 24-page full-color booklet with rare photos and linear notes. Extensive sales gallery, beautiful embossed slipcover with new artwork by esteemed painter David LeBeau and many other surprises. There are surprises in this one. I, out of those, I think probably Sidekicks is probably the one I want. Well, I think no, Three Ninjas, too. I bet. I'm a bit like I'm a little bit older, so Three Ninjas were not like kind of my, 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 but it was not my era. Like I saw them, okay, but, uh, it was not like something that, you know, I wasn't young enough to be really kind of affected by it. <clears throat> like with me, it was, uh, it's definitely Aaron approved. It is Cult of Cinema approved. As you see, if you've got my uh, Cult of Cinema t-shirt or hoodie or mug, then you know it for sure. This will reach out there. Uh, George, have a great evening, man. And thank you, uh, uh, by the way, for this, because me, this will have viewing between me and my better half. And, and Raj, too. I think he's he's a fan of Mae West. Oh, yes, <clears throat> and, of course, None of the Devil. Yeah. <laughs> Love me some non-splitation. But enjoy your evening. But, yeah, this is definitely called Cinema Approved. I wanted to, like, note this one earlier. I forgot about it. I do apologize. But it's a great release. Uh, Grindout's releasing. They just have some incredible stuff. This isn't the only release coming out, though. There is another one that they're bringing out. Call again. I feel like there's something else. Oh, the Reading Rainbow biography is coming out, which is you know it's a book, but still. It's, People read. I read. Obviously, about that massive like X Men on the bus. I'll be reviewing stuff. Those, by the way, if you have not seen, but uh, <clears throat> my uh, the cult comics one that I did on this on my main channel yet <clears throat> on here, uh, please check it out. I worked really really hard on the video. <clears throat> it's probably the cult comics videos are hardest, probably one of the hardest things I do. Uh, so uh, if you ever get a chance to check it out. I would appreciate it. Well, there's so much coming out now. There's so much coming out. Look, the 88 film stuff will go really quickly into this. Uh, I'd say if you're going to dive into 88 films, you've never been in there. Let's look at the coming soon. We'll dive into that really quick before I have to go. If I am losing my voice, I do apologize. So we got the Flag of Iron coming out. Legendary Weapons of Kind. That's a really cool one. The Anaconda set. I'm not going to lie. I would buy this. Look how sexy this is. Is that not a sexy looking set? 
See? Oh, my God. Like, I was going to buy the Anaconda set here. Like, it was only like 10 bucks or 15 bucks, something like that. It was the Anaconda and something else. I think Lake Plastic. Like the set. And I mean, still, actually, but look at this. <clears throat> this is so cool. Yeah, like J Lo and Ice Cube, Eric Stoltz, Owen Wilson. And that's like you get into the sequels and you get other people. Like, who's in the other shape ones? David Hasselhoff. What? what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, part three, I think. Uh, John Rice Davies in part four. Hey, there's Jeff. Welcome, man. I got. <clears throat> So I'm heading out now in a second. <laughs> For those that just came in, my good friend George got the May West box set and the Nun of the Devil. Hey, DJ, welcome, man. The are fun films. Yeah, the are fun. Were you an episode of Walker, Texas Adventure? That's cool. And of course, I have, I guess I got to put the, the slip back on it. But before I do, <laughs> X-Men on the bus. This is the original classic X-Men on the bus, by the way, guys. Well, let's put a slip on. I'll show you it with a slip on it. Before I go. And I did take the time to uh, break in the spine. This is a classic Alex Ross cover, by the way, guys. I love me some Alex Ross. First 31 issues of X-Men. So you're going to get like people like Kezar, the first Prince of Kezar, first Prince of Magneto, first Prince of the Blob. Um, a whole ton of a whole ton of first appearances in this one, actually. I need to get uh, I need to get the second volume eventually. Just ported the uh, Death Game. Nice. Congratulations. Uh, trash. Anyway, I, I'm Aaron. It's it's different. I mean, here's the thing, Sarah. Uh, it's very different. So, how to collect X Men? <clears throat> if you're a Silver Age fan, then you probably will. It's, it's broken down in, in, in the two sort of eras, right? So there's the initial first, maybe 19, 20 issues, something like that. That's Stanley Jack Kirby. So you're getting that pretty much for the Kirby art alone. Uh, it's got, you know, an early Fantastic Four type of feel to it. Um, and then it goes into the Roy Thomas, like Werner Hoth era of the X-Men. And I think it gets better, actually, when uh, Roy Thomas takes over the, uh, the comic. I, I love Roy Thomas, of course, you know, classic guy from for you know you know conan was his big thing tales from crypt's amazing i love tales from crypt um and there was a so there's only two omnibuses to collect the classic x-men series it's very different though the artwork's different the style is different but it's good to have it's a good you no know, you have to remember that back when the uncanny x-men came out when chris Clarence, well when len win did the john size x-men and that would lead into the uh to the Chris Claremont, like uh, at the time, uh, God, who was doing it at the time? There's some, Dave, Dave Cockrum, uh, like era of uh, of the uh, of the Uncanny X Men. Uh, that there are so many people that were writing in saying, "I hate this." Like Wolverine is a boring character. Who likes this Wolverine guy? We want like the classic X Men characters, and it stayed that way for a while until like I think Storm was probably the first like over character in the new X Men uh, comics. So you got yourself the there's two classic X Men like series like so if you're like the Silver Age stuff then yeah it's 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 a fun read it's fun it's a little bit cheesier uh, you get like a different origin kind of for uh, for Professor X and like the way that he goes he, the way he ends up in a in a wheelchair on a Thomas kick lately and then yeah definitely uh, worth uh, worth checking out this is definitely early Roy Thomas but still you get Roy Thomas in there so you get like early stuff 
you'll see along the lines of, to give you an idea, like the early artwork is uh, kind of like the, the Jack Kirby art. And you can tell it's Kirby, right? <clears throat> I don't have a Sergeant Rock one. I would like to have it, though. And then when we get into, like, Jay Gavin or Werner Hoth or, or someone like that, you get a different, more streamlined look for the characters. And it's really well done, actually. Uh, but it's an early Roy Thomas stuff. There is a few TMNT, not Anvises, but IDW does, like, these uh, oversized hardcovers for TMNT. I, they're up there. They're up there ways. But um, I run seven or nine volumes probably right now. So worth checking out, though. Really good stuff. Uh, I don't have them uh, myself, but I read a few of the stories, and I do want to collect them eventually. I want to get some IDW, especially along the lines of the TMNT stuff. And, of course, not IDW, but I want to get Paper Girls as well. A really good story. I would recommend, if you've never checked out Paper Girls, fantastic story. Uh, epic, epic one. That oh, I heard cover with the Kirby cover. It is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, but... Yeah, so you got the two like uh, initial X Men ones. You go from that to Uncanny X Men. Uh, they had a, a stealth reprint of that. It comes in and out of out of uh, out of stock all the time. So make sure that you, uh, when it comes back in, if you don't have the Uncanny X Men volume one, get it. It's amazing. So there's four like volumes for Uncanny X Men uh, thus far. You go from that into like you're probably you're looking at. Uh, Mutant Massacre, Fall of the Mutants, and then something along the lines of Inferno. And then you get yourself to your uh, Chris Claremont, Jim Lee stuff, which is two volumes. And I, from there, you can pretty much, I say Age of Apocalypse and the Companion is, uh, is the best place to go after that. Anyway, there you go. I'm a comic book geek. If that, <laughs> and obviously, I'm an X-Men geek. Uh, I do tend to like a lot of Marvel stuff. I haven't gotten a lot of the new 52 stuff. Uh, I do need more. I got well. I got a lot of the rebirth stuff, and I got some new Fifty Two stuff in like in trades. So that's the reason I've been buying a lot of the new Fifty Two omnibuses. Uh, yeah, read the of the TMNT stuff is really good. IDW's TMNT they're oversized. They're really good looking. Uh, also, uh, I'm going to throw a pitch in the dark for a, a comic that series that I like that's finally starting to get like get some love and get some uh, some good editions of it. They recently put out a, uh, a Madman, um, kind of an omnibus compendium library edition. I guess we'll call it library edition is what they are. So if they put it a Madman library edition uh, well, with, you know, Michael and Laura Allard. So, and there's a volume two coming out. So definitely worth checking out. Now, the new, that was actually by, a Can I think it was a Canadian author. Uh, Je Jeff Lemire, I think, did that. Or did he do Animal Man? I know he did Animal Man. I'm not sure if he worked on uh, Swamp Thing or not when he did kind of the like the green, right? The Parliament of the Green. <clears throat> but yeah, there's a lot of good Swamp Man, Swamp uh, thing stuff out there. Uh, Nessie A. Collins actually underrated run, so definitely worth checking out. Let's see, I go to leave, and you guys suck me in with comic book talk because you know that that's going to get me. Like, I love my comic book talk. I want to get some Virgo this year, though. I want to probably get at least uh, one. For comics and John Byrne. John Byrne's run on Fantastic Four was was groundbreaking. Uh, I would say the first Fantastic Four volume on this is back in print now. It's been out of print for a while, but it's back in print. So at this point, for the first time in a while, the classic Fantastic Four, so volume one, two, three, and four are all pretty much in print. Uh, they're which are really good. Now, especially the the first three, you know, volume two, it kind of really peaks for me at volume two with the, this man's monster, which, you know, the classic like Stanley Jack Kirby stuff on uh, on Fantastic Four. Uh, now, volume four is good, <clears throat> but it goes, you know, that's the end of, of the Lee Kirby era. And you can tell that Kirby's kind of not into it at that point. He's, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's pretty much divorced himself from it. So it goes up to, so Stanley and Jack Kirby, when they ran the run on, on Fantastic Four is the first hundred issues, and then it's taken over by a couple different people. Uh, I think that after that, uh, then it would be like uh, like John Byrne that would be really, really like integral to the Fantastic Four, and in, in the modern day era, Jonathan Hickman, like one million percent. Big Batman fan, love Batman. Also, I love, you know, 
Superman. And my cousin is, huge, is a huge Batman fan. He used to collect Batman for quite a while. <clears throat> and when I say collect, he actually bought the subscriptions. Like, we lived in Canada, so that was that was not cheap. <laughs> so he had the subscription to all the Batman comics at the time. That was around the, uh, I guess, just the pre and around the fall of Gotham era, right? Because they had like a lot of Batman comics at that point. There's Batman, Detective Comics, Shadow of the Bat, uh, the, the Robin, I think. Chuck Dixon's Robin was, was going on at that point. Um, we had Azrael and uh, Batman Chronicles. That was another one. Batman Chronicles. <clears throat> we haven't had a lot of Batman omnibuses. Like the, the Golden Age Batman, Superman era stuff, actually really fun. Surprisingly, Superman is a little bit darker. In some cases, and Batman is, especially in the early stuff. Like Superman, here's a guy that's supposed to be kind of the Man of Steel, but in the early comics, it's like this guy's beating up his wife. I, <laughs> I'm gonna find a way to make him think I'm somebody else and scare the crap out of him. Get your man what's that too? Excellent. W, ooh, WC feels it would be amazing. Actually, I would love that. But I don't know. There's a few. If you're going to go for another female actress, Ken, who would you go for? Because there's the thing. We got Marlena Dietrich. We got Mae West. Who's the next? Who's the next one to do? Think about that. Yeah, there's some great stuff. Uh, Jeff, if you don't have it, I recommend uh, the uh, Scott Snyder's run on Batman. There's two on the second on is either out or coming out really soon. So they've now got the complete like new 52 Scott Snyder run on Omnibus. So you got Death of, Death of the Family in that one. You'll have the Quarter Howl storyline in there as well. You get some like um, some of the later stuff, which is eh, okay. But um, Snyder's run, Batman's actually pretty good. So that one I can I can definitely recommend that. Uh, the Death of Superman is coming up actually as an Omnibus really soon. I think it's in June. Uh, so I uh, got all the issues. Nice. Um so I that's going to be a big one. I uh, I used to collect Superman during that time period. And I think everybody collected during the the reign of Superman was like the four different characters, and he had like you know who is Superman? Is it the cybernetic guy that looks completely evil? Is it you know John Henry Irons who says he's not Superman, so you know he's not? Is it the clone of Superman? No, because he's a clone of Superman and Lex, or is it this mysterious guy? That ha that's a, a lot harsher and harder than Superman, which was the Eradicator. Spoiler alert! Um, but a really good storyline, and it has the in the omnibus. It actually has the fallout page where where Superman's dead, which is actually pretty cool. I just wish they had the Iron Band because uh, I missed out on that like black comic with the, the black like uh, bag comic with the Superman with the bloody Superman symbol, and it had an armband inside with a black armband. I always wanted that actually. Anywho, there you go, guys. You kept me, you kept me longer. Uh, do I collect floppies or only collect editions? I do collect some floppies when uh, the uh, I, when they were doing finishing off the uh, Nick Spencer's run on uh, on Spider Man. I, I collected like uh, the end of Nick Spencer's run. I missed a lot of it. So I didn't really feel the reveal of the, you know, the main villain uh, was uh, was super, you know, it was okay. It wasn't great. I was a little bit convoluted. It, he had a good chance there <clears throat> to undo one more day, and he didn't do it. And that, I was disappointed in that. But I do like the fact that he undid, you know, Sin's Past. That was kind of cool. That, you know, he said, oh, Sin's Past didn't really happen. I totally faked it. So that was kind of cool. So I got some of that. I do get floppies not a lot uh, well i do try uh there was four of them actually there was uh well five of you include supergirl but there was the eradicator uh the uh cyborg superman there was superboy and there was steel so there were four different like because there was four different like superman comics at the time and each one of them had a die cut issue where you'd have like with a different color and a different superman symbol and you'd open it up and you see the superman character underneath the superman symbol so there's four altogether. Yeah, Stephen, that's a Superman really, really stretched. Out. Did you like the Death Superman? No. You read Death Superman, right? Actually, I don't think I did. It's good. I mean, like, I'm going to say something here, and a lot of people are, are, are kind of different. But you guys let me know what you think. Um, for me, the best part of Death of Superman 
is like because Doomsday isn't that is really Mary Pickford said I would love actually isn't it really not that not that exciting of, of a character. It's great like introduction for a character, but he's he's literally he's he's a beast. He is meant to kill. He, he's there to kill, and he loves to kill, and he's there to kill Superman, and he does it. He does his job. Uh, but uh, in all honesty, I would say. That my uh, that I like the after effect, after stuff. So I love Funeral for a Friend. I like voraciously read that. I thought that was way, you know, way better written than the, the actual death was, because death had a, had the gimmick. So there were seven issues. And of course, there was a JLA crossover issue as well. But it started like seventh issue was on the, the first issue at, at seven panels. Then the next issue at six, five, four, three, two, until the de- the final, the actual issue seventy Superman seventy five where he dies as one panel per page. And so it's like a big, massive brawl, and it can end the only way that it, that any fight like that can end with both of them lying dead on the ground. <clears throat> and they would bring back and use Doomsday again, but I don't think he was ever used as well uh, as um, as he was in that, uh, in that time period. But there was some great stuff going on before then. There's actually an Anmus called... Uh, uh, exile like super, a superman is called exile which is uh around the time you know where superman actually does have to exile himself there's a really great storyline in that about uh oh god about a character called the guardian <clears throat> and there's this uh the guardian is like he's pre- he's in he's in the hospital i think it's the guardian he's in the hospital and there's another person going around as a guardian and he's it's a much more vicious guardian and I won't give away the twist, but it's a really good twist on who the Guardian is. Yeah, what a great storyline that was. Hey there, Mike. Welcome, man. It is such a really good storyline. So uh, the Superman XL, I would definitely recommend that. It's got a lot of different stories in it. But it does overall have a really, really great uh, really great base What I recommend if you're starting in, into the omnibus stuff, like get yourself, like if you're into DC like um, new 52 air is actually pretty good when it comes to that. Uh, but get some of the outside stuff like uh, for for like if you're a, a Marvel fan and you're and you're like me, uh, you want to get yourself like there's ones that you got to have like in your collection, in my opinion, like X-Men, like, you, you know, you're going to have X-Men in your collection. I um, the n- new one coming out now is uh, Wolverine and the X-Men, which was done by Jason Aaron. Really, really good. Um Mary Astros, it would be cool too, actually. Um, so definitely look into that. I actually had that one on pre-order, but I had to cancel it because you know, I just had too many things pre-ordered at once. Uh, it tends to happen. I didn't initially have too many things pre-ordered at the same time, but what happened is what, that a lot of things got pushed forward, and now you know the, you get a few coming out at the same time, and you got to like prioritize. Uh, but if you're um, – actually, I like the spines. I was initially thought I, was, I wasn't going to like it, but I don't mind the smaller writing here. I know it's like really tiny, and I think they'll change it after time. But I really love this. I really love these here, these here pictures. And the biggest like improvement, CR, is is this right here. Uh, putting the the uh, things on the back looks way better. Like look at the earlier like and some of the DC stuff where they have just like the character's name kind of embossed in, in black. It'll be really hard to see. Um, especially on camera. So that, but Marvel does it better when it comes to uh, when it comes to that. But yeah, so Jason Aaron's Thor, pretty much uh, from what I heard, that's pre- like if you don't pre-order that one, you're not going to get it um, because you know you got the whole Mighty Thor aspect of it. You got the God Killer storyline. Everybody loves the God Killer storyline. We're just coming coming in the next film. We got the uh, the the Jane uh, like Thor. Storyline, which which is incredible. Uh, Jason Aaron just had an amazing run on Thor, and don't underrate Matt Fraction's run either. Matt Fraction, of course, he's probably more famous for uh, doing like Hawkeye, but uh, Matt Fraction had a really decent run on Thor as well. So both of those are coming out this year. We have got a Matt Fraction Thor on this. We have a Jason Aaron Thor on this. So, uh, get those early. Onslaught's coming out as well. Onslaught, so that's X Men uh, and the Avengers uh, crossover. It kind of leads into what we would become Heroes Reborn or here and then Heroes Return. Uh, that was uh, that one's been a print for a bit. That one's around 1,200, 1,300 pages. It has a lot of different characters in it. And I see that one going out of print pretty quick as well. 
Uh, there's a few of them that I think are gonna are gonna go quick. For those that have never collected or don't know when it comes to don't know what comes to these omnibuses, basically you gotta grab now. Like there was a time when you could wait and you could say, Well, I'll get this one eventually. But nowadays it's like a lot of these go to print. And unless it's like super popular, like unless you're an X-Men and <laughs> an X-Men like like Onbus, you're a Spider-Man Onbus, and even Spider-Man's not safe, uh, then you you don't know what uh if you're gonna be in print and you don't know if you're going to get it from like this is here. like this i this should be what we call evergreen so this should never be this was in print for years by the way guys this is an x-men original this was a whale and a whale for the for the those that like don't collect the stuff a whale is a is a hard to find on bus it's uh you know like like moby dick right it's a white whale it's it's a whale um so that was in print for, I think, like five years. So this is the first time that's been in print for, I think, around five years. I've run five years. See, you might, might might know better than me on that one. I'm, I'm a newer collector when it comes to this type of stuff. But think about this. Like, most of the movies, stuff that we got, we collect, we can find them for, like, or we can find them on eBay for, you know, for de fairly decent prices, unless it's a box set or something like that. Um, but these here, just like your films, by the way, uh, these are limited editions. Uh, they're not like they're, they're not made over and over again. Uh, when a lot of Marvel has a limited amount, they don't tell people how much it is either. So if something become is overwhelmingly popular, that doesn't mean they're going to remake it again. It just means that they're going to make something else like it. They're going to put something else like it. So, so let's just say Jason Aaron's Thor, you know, that's pretty much a, it's a guaranteed seller. It's going to, it's going to sell out. Well, you can get them for different prices. Trash, you live in the States, right? So where you live in the states, you've got like places like um, in stock trades and um, and organic price books where you can get them for a lot cheaper. Like here in Canada, uh, it's more it's harder to get. Like we got a uh, we literally we have either the comic shop so if we if we're close to a comic shop or we got Amazon. And uh, so uh, now this one here, well, I got this one when it was on pre order. So this one's cover price in Canada is always one twenty five hundred, I think, in the U.S. And uh, when I ordered this one, I got it for under $90. So, uh, which is good for here because, you know, for $9 Canadian, by the way. So about like, you know, about $70 over there in the U.S. Um, but if you go to, like, if you go to any of the, go to organic price books or in stock trades, one of those places, um, then you'll find a lot of these here for like $40 or $50 American. Uh, sometimes even even better. These slash prices sometimes like 60, 70 percent. Uh, so trash, you can go there and get like all kinds of 100 bullets by Brian Ozzarella. One, two of that is coming out uh, soon. A really good on this, by the way. A really good storyline. Brian Ozzarella's 100 bullets, if you've never read it. Definitely recommend that. Uh, great stuff when it comes to uh, when it comes to that one. The, and the cool thing is too, trash, that they have oh, the Marvel Zombie. Zonis. Was that an album? I did not know that was one, actually, Jeff. Um, they have limited editions covers. So if you go to places like Organic Price Books, uh, I said it so many times, I feel like they should sponsor me. Uh, so, um, you, uh, There's alternate artwork. So uh, when they put out Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man on the bus, it's a fairly thin one, actually. There were three different covers. There was just a regular cover that was for like standard if you bought an Amazon. But if you bought it at like at, at a comic shop or or the in-stock trades or organic, you you could get like there's two other different covers you could get. Um, so when I went to the comic shop in St. John's, I, I picked up a bunch of omnibuses and I would, whenever I could, I would choose the all the variant artwork because it was much harder to get. Variant artwork on the books sell out a lot faster. So this here is Alex Ross artwork, and you think this one might be the variant, but it's not. The actual Kirby cover is the variant artwork, and it's harder to get, and they tend to sell out uh, faster than the uh, than the other artwork so you got the you got that and you have in the back of the books too like your features just, just like your movie your blu-ray has a special features there's like uh, like artwork like black and white artwork breakdowns there'll be like like write-ups on on characters there'll be interviews stories sometimes you can get like two to three hundred pages of special features in the back of these here on the buses uh so uh i think i'm pretty sure there's like uh one of the ones i got recently has at least 100 150 uh like special features 
See, I did not know the Marvel Zombies. That's actually cool. That see, there's a, only a few times that they've like they've changed it from having like. For, this is what you'll see, guys. Marvel Zombies right there, right on the in the Marvel ones. Um, but what they'll do is they'll call they'll, always Marvel Zombies unless it's Zombies or it's a Venom. Then it's a Ven Omnibus. And there are three of those right now. There is a fourth one, uh, Ven Omnibus, coming out, with the, which is, I think, Ryan Stigman, right? And, um, well, this is, this is in a way, it's its own type of physical media. It's on media, it's, but it's, for me, like, this is right up there with that. Uh, one of the big differences is that, from DC and Marvel, by the way, uh, on the back of Marvel ones, overall, most of them, they show the, all the, co the covers from the that are on the inside inside the book and uh the early the silver age uh era of marvel and the golden age usually have the uh will have the the letters pages as well so and that is really really interesting to read so, and dc has never included letters pages as far as i i can tell on any other omnibuses which is a real shame and they don't put the covers comic covers on the back of the books, except for I think the recent Brave and the Bold of Volume Three, that one did have comic covers on the back. So that's actually interesting to see, and hope to see that they do that in the near in the future as well. Have a read Gail Simone's. I love Gail Simone actually. But yeah, I recently showed on uh, on Twitter and on my Instagram, like kind of my, my kind of my viewing room, where I have all my omnibuses at. Yeah, letters pages. I so wish CR that DC would do that as well. They would take and put the letters pages. Because you remember the letters pages back in the Detective Comics and the Batman comics? That would be so cool to have. I'm hoping that their like their first Silver Age Batman is coming out. Uh, I think in May or June. I got it pre-ordered. Actually, it was actually not an expensive one. Uh, DC tends to be more expensive than Marvel. Uh, DC Omnibuses can go as high as $195 Canadian. A more recent Marvel one. Some of the more some of the bigger ones can tend to go up to 183 uh, uh, Canadian. So it does get like a bit pricey. So you really, what you have to do is you got to go in there early and you have to pre-order because when you pre-order, like the, the drop, the prices down sometimes almost as much as 40 to 50% during pre-order time. So you can get them for a lot cheaper. Um, if you're in the United States, you're, you're set because there's a ton of places in the U.S. to order from, get get it, and get, like, great stuff and, and great, uh, like, I would have to order probably around $300 worth of omnibuses to get, like, good deals from in-stock trades. But in-stock trades, I think, is the only one in that or that I could ship to from uh, the United States that would give me decent, uh, like, uh, really decent, uh, really decent, like, shipping prices if enough is ordered. All right. There you go, guys. Uh Lifespan of books when the when the last page turned. Never. Oh my God! You read books only once. That, especially like a comic. Like, do you know how many times I've I've, I've read some of my stuff? Um, for me, like, there's movies that once you watch them, you're not going to watch them again. But they're in your collection. But I got a better chance, to, like you know, reading some of, some of this as like I've seen the Ebola syndrome. I'm not going to watch that again. Uh, I got a lot of movies in my collection that I'm probably going to return to eventually. But um, for me, you know, sacrilege. But the truth is I, I read a lot and I uh, I listen to music. So, you know, there's, I'm a, again, I'm a jack of all trades when it comes to collecting as well. It can be hard sometimes because I mean, you got to pick your poison. Uh, last year, <clears throat> Uh, I uh, I had to decide, you know, did I want, to, there's some, like, there were some really great box sets that came out. Uh, they're uh, an amazing ones, like some, like what I would consider some must-have box sets. But I had to choose between, okay, there's certain books that I want, that I really want to have. And will I feel worse if I don't get these books or if I don't get these box sets right now? And I, you know, and I, there's, you know, there's money issues too. Normally, I do both. But, you know, the car went on the fritz a bit. Uh, but uh, so I decided, you know what? I got a lot of films, but I really, really, really need to get some of these in my collection. So I'm 50. I'll be 51 this year, by the way. And if I may say so, look pretty good for <laughs> that age. Um, you know, um, but 
So some people buy cars. Some people have affairs with their secretaries. Uh, when they uh, get to that middle age part, I guess. I buy comics. Uh, so I want to thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I am Aaron. As I always, remember this, guys. Um, and I, I truly do mean this. Um, here's the thing. It costs nothing to be kind, so be kind to others. Trust me. A lot of people out there that are working and working jobs like me, uh, we really appreciate it when you are. And we do go the extra mile when you do. So be kind to others. Be kind to yourself because you know what? You do deserve it. Here in the cult of cinema, there is always another movie. Thank you, George. You're an awesome dude. I really, really appreciate that. And you have no idea how much I do. Uh, and there's always another comic. There is always another CD. And here in the College of Cinema, Heidi Ho, you got a friend to the end. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. I hope you have an amazing night. See you soon.